Hi everybody and welcome back. We have now heard about the paparazzi debacle, yes, all four of them, and the catastrophic car chase, of which the only catastrophe is that we have to hear about it every day and likely will for the next week or two. However, there was something very noticeable in the various pieces of footage, which is now coming from everywhere. It is noticeable that the only person who looks upset, anxious or distressed is Harry. Neither Meghan nor her mother looked upset at all. One of the photographers were correct when he stated that Meghan even had a faint smile on her face. Now, I'm not even going to debate the chase or no chase any longer. What I do want to talk about is Harry, and I don't care anymore if he wants to sue me or get the millions to harass me. I don't care. But all this pussyfooting around is getting on my nerves. And besides, there are others with bigger channels saying worse things. So go for them first, and don't be a coward, and start with those who can't fight back. Anyway, the question is, is Harry in danger? And I say yes, yes, and yes. Why three times? Well, let me explain. First and foremost, Harry is in danger of himself. Currently, Harry is his own biggest enemy. I cannot begin to understand why anyone is still questioning whether Harry is still or is currently using drugs. I think it's either stupidity, extreme ignorance or wishful thinking because Harry told us over and over and over again that he is still using. As a matter of fact, he even told us that a certain white powder does not do as much for him as certain hallucinogenics. Harry tells us in his book he is still using. He says as much on the Colbert show. But I do not even want to talk about Harry's drug abuse today. But instead, I would like to focus on what Harry has been experiencing mentally and what the long-term use of a variety of drugs have now done to his already semi-fragile state of mind. And you know what? We are not speculating or even guessing at all today. No, no, no. We are going to use the information we have and got from either Harry himself or close friends of his. Now let's look at Harry before he met Meghan. He was one of the most popular members of the royal family. But why? Firstly, because he was Diana's youngest son. I don't think I even need to explain that to you. Secondly, because of his antics and stuff he got himself into, being photographed drunk, being photographed naked, we saw that he was athletic, we saw how good he was with kids. All in all, he was the joker in the family and provided the entertainment and comedy relief. But in reality... The real Harry was not the guy presented to us. The real Harry started smoking weed and drinking before his 13th birthday. When he was caught, he denied it. His father found it less trouble, less time and effort to believe his child. And the behavior continued. Behavior, his nannies, minders and security were often aware of. As a matter of fact, on a trip to Africa, they smoked dope themselves in front of Harry. And yes, guys, I'm not talking nonsense. It is in Harry's book. I also believe Harry when he said he suffered from depression and still does. I believe him when he says he is suffering from PTSD, but not because of his mother's death and not because of his stint in the army or in Afghanistan. I believe everything 
a combination of everything. His mother's death, his jealousy of his brother, his own insecurity, etc., etc., caused him extreme anxiety, which culminated in a form of PTSD. So let's quickly take a break and recap. Drug use, alcohol abuse, PTSD, depression. Harry suffered from all of that before he met Meghan. But he was also already paranoid before he met Meghan. Cressida Bonus spoke about Harry's paranoid behavior, seeing paparazzi everywhere, behind trees and hiding just about anywhere and everywhere, often without others being able to see the photographer. We also know, because we saw it with our own eyes, that Harry was a petulant child and teenager and turned into an entitled petulant adult. We saw that in footage, on photographs, etc. Okay, so let's tally it all up once again. Drug use, alcohol abuse, PTSD, depression, paranoia, petulant and entitled, and all before he met Megan. Now, that is a very long list of issues, and everything on the list is problematic, not only for a royal, but for everybody and anybody, anybody in his orbit, and of course for any other person suffering from similar inflictions. And then Harry met Sally. Oops, <laughs> I mean Harry met Meghan. And who was Meghan before she met Harry? Spoiled, petulant, entitled. We saw that. We saw that in footage her own father made available. We saw how she acted towards her little friends. We saw how she treated her father. We saw that, and we know that. And Mr. Markle even admitted to spoiling Megan. We also know Megan had a love for recreational drug use. We know she loved a bit of coke. Now, not the cola kind, though, from time to time. We know she smoked, and often a little more than just tobacco. And we know she loves her wine. So much so... She named her blog after her favourite wine. And then these two problematic people got together. And I almost want to go, well, what did you expect to happen? But it is more delicate, <laughs> in inverted commas, than that. And for legal reasons, I have to be as delicate as possible. Harry's drug and alcohol use, which he has admitted to, is starting to have a severe effect on him. And how do we know this? Because, once again, we can see it. It is not a myth or even a joke when I say that people who have been smoking cannabis regularly over a prolonged period of time get monkey or beady eyes because they do <laughs> after taking certain substances like the coke not the cola mary jane etc the pupils get noticeably larger which makes the eyes look darker it can also trigger dry eye syndrome which can cause the eyelids to swell up a little making the eyes look smaller. So, your eyes end up looking darker and smaller. Hence, we call it monkey eyes in my home or otherwise beady eyes. We also all know that excess alcohol leaves you with red and bloodshot eyes. But okay, you don't need a lecture from me. All I'm saying is that Harry's prolonged use of Mary Jane and her cousin, Cannabis, is starting to show in his eyes. And if you do not believe me, 
Go and look at some photographs of him taken over the last year or two. When Harry arrived at the court and again at the coronation, he looked a little different. Some was speculating that he had some Botox, but the truth is that the bloated look in his face could be due to drug and alcohol abuse. We have also noticed frequent redness in his face, signs again of alcohol abuse. Then someone asked me why it appears as if Harry is using some of Meghan's spray tan lately. Well, now you know why. Okay, so I've now given you so much evidence along with Harry's own word. So there cannot be any argument as to whether he is an addict. He is. He is. And I'm willing to bet it is starting to affect his mental and physical health. Actually, not starting to. It already has and still is. And the longer this continues, the worse it will get. So now, we have to dissect the why, who, when, etc. We know what we know about Megan's personality. And we know that along with everything we already said about her, she is the worst, most openly prolific narcissist. Megan wants fame and money in a nutshell. The thing is she wants to be more famous than anyone else in the world and she wants more money than anyone else in the world. I have no idea how she really feels about Harry and neither do you. But if she somehow has any type of feeling for him, something akin to love or even just caring. Whatever positive emotion a narcissist is capable of, she is certainly not going about it in any loving or caring way. Harry is a stranger to the United States and California. So where does he get his supply from? Yes, Mary Jane is easy. There are these little dispensaries in California. But what about the rest? The mushrooms and that other plant, the coke, which is not cola. Where is he getting that from? He doesn't know people. He doesn't know where to go to get it. He is not Californian. Anyway, I know there was a time when a god helped him obtain prescription drugs. But again, where is the rest coming from? The ayahuasca that he spoke about. Now let me quickly tell you about that. If Harry wants to turn around now and say he used ayahuasca as a teen or while in England, he is lying. Ayahuasca is a plant-based psychedelic drug brewed into tea and where do we find the plant? In South America and Brazil, not in Britain. And who do you think in Harry and Meghan's immediate circle has the knowledge of this plant and how to prepare it and what the effects are? Who do you think? Well, in case you are still scratching your head, none other than the beautiful, elegant, witch of a mother-in-law, Doria Ragland. <laughs> Do you guys remember an interview Harry had? Now, I can't remember with him, whether with Oprah and, or someone else, but in this interview he said, Megan and Doria showed him all these natural healthy ways and that he no longer needs his antidepressant medication. Remember that? He said that and I actually want to go look for that because that is excellent evidence. But never mind, when he talks about them showing him these natural things which he's now using and which causes him not to need his antidepressants anymore, I mean, hello, hello, I uh, 
Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca leads to hallucinations, feelings of euphoria. It can help with depression. But a spoonful of sugar does not make a cake. And there are possible negative effects. And these can be caused by a number of things. Things like other medication or drugs the user may have taken. How much ayahuasca he ingested. And so on and so on. And a spoonful of the wrong thing at the wrong time can lead to vomiting, diarrhea, hot and cold flushes, negative energy and emotions. And yes, my dear friends, even death. So Harry enjoys being fed this shit by his wife and mother-in-law. He thinks he is cool. He thinks he's not part of the Californian set. He thinks he is healthy. He thinks he is thinking clearly for the first time in his life. <laughs> stupid, 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 deluded idiot. His personality, his depression, his drug and alcohol abuse and his own darn delusions is leaving him open to be exploited by not only Megan but also Doria and others like, let me name at least one, Dr. Gabor Mate. And therefore, Although I feel that Harry is his own biggest enemy, he is extremely vulnerable because of the state he is already in. His wife, a cruel narcissist, is absolutely able or capable of scaring Harry to death. And we saw a glimpse of it during the chase debacle. We saw how scared he looked and how composed she looked. We saw the same in the Netflix series where she calmly asks whether the guy on the scooter is still there. She doesn't even look herself. All she does is smile while Harry is breaking his neck to find the non-existent scooter. Now, go look it up. Mary Jane can make your heart beat faster, your blood pressure rise, etc. Now put a guy already under the influence, under further stress and anxiety or expose him to fear and it can lead to a stroke, heart disease and of course death. No jokes, a guy with an already elevated heartbeat can literally die of fear. And you know what? It will be deemed natural causes. So you are asking me whether Harry is in danger? <laughs> you betcha he is. Look, there is a small, tiny, minute risk from the Taliban. But even the Taliban sees Harry as almost insignificant and would rather waste a risky operation on a more worthy opponent. Yes, there are some crazies out in the public, but we all face them every day and we are still hopping along. No, in my opinion, Harry's bigger risk and danger come from his immediate environment and himself. And why is Marcus Anderson hanging around so much lately? Will he be the devastated witness or does he have to be around to support and console the poor, poor widowed duchess. Anyway guys, you make your minds up, but if I had Harry's ear and trust, I would have suggested he takes his son and hop on the first plane back to the United Kingdom where I suggest he leaves his son in the excellent care of his family and book himself into an addiction facility. Harry is not living his best life in California. No man who books random hotel rooms only a few kilometers from home is a happy man. 
And no, I do not buy the business meeting thing either. Most hotels have conference rooms which can be rented by the hour or by the day. And after the conference or meeting, everyone goes home. Unless, of course, Harry is by then too drunk to go home after these meetings. There is no reason to book a room. And with a mother-in-law whose own father died under suspicious circumstances and who loves brewing him concoctions, he should forget about hotel rooms and rather flee the United States. Okay guys, that is my humble opinion. I may be right, I may be wrong, but this is how I feel about the subject. And, of course, that was my five cents worth for the day. So, until we meet again on the next video, please take good care of yourselves. Bye!